Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of a Comedy Advice Podcast. I am your host, Stefan Satani. Joining me today, a very special guest. He's a comedian, actor, scholar, podcaster, you name it. Everybody, please welcome Teron Von Gossery. You know, <laughs> you know, the thing is this. I feel like you please. code switched for the intro. I feel like you normally talk with a lot more swag. I feel like you're the guy who knows all the, the lyrics to every Eminem song, but when it came to this, <laughs> You turned on, you you turned on your, it, it, it was your, you know, it, it was your, your, your white voice. Was it, I feel like it was a white voice. I feel like you, like your name's Stefan, bro. I know. That, that's like the, swag. that's the most swag that I have to me. It really. I don't know. You have the hair, you have the little face. Look, look at the face. Look at the face fuzz. The face wasn't <laughs> there. You have swag. You're swaggy. I could see you being swaggy. I, oh man, I appreciate that. Especially coming from you, who is one of the swaggiest pre- people that I've had on this podcast so wow, far. Wow, I'll take that. Usually I'm in my bathrobe. I appreciate you. Oh yes. And, and I left that part out of the intro. I was going to call you, nominate you as bathrobe bay, but that's, I just I like that. that. Bathrobe bay. That's what I use actually. I like that. Oh, that's wonderful. But I decided yeah. I was so white enough already. I didn't want to just pile it bathrobe on. Bathrobe heartthrob is another one that I throw out there. The bathrobe <laughs> heartthrob. I just throw it out there. You know, because here's the thing with nicknames. If you throw enough out, eventually they'll stick. You know, if you there throw you enough out, eventually they will stick. That is a real thing. That is a real thing to do in life. You know, I, I don't have any nicknames and I haven't thought of any for myself. So I'm hoping maybe by the end of this podcast, we can well, that's because you have a cool name. name. You have a cool name. Have you ever heard of a basketball player named Steph Curry? Yes, I have heard of him. Yes. Interesting. A lot of people <laughs> think that Steph is his name. It is not. His name is Wardell. His name is Wardell. That is a true fact. Oh, but you didn't, you didn't even know that. You didn't even think that he had a different name. You didn't even think that. No. That's the whole thing. That's how nicknames come about. You have to understand how it works. People oh, don't realize that about simple things. That's very true. And you know what? I'm glad that I have this extra padding with the hair because you're already dropping some cold, hard facts. I'm there. telling you the truth. Steph Curry, that's one. Will Smith. What is Will short for? Willard. Willard Smith. That is a real thing. No way. Oh, Willard God. Smith. I, don't, I didn't make this up. That's his name is Willard. You would have thought, oh, his name is William. Why would it not be? Maybe it is actually <laughs> just Will. But no, it's Willard. So, so we, can, we can swag you up. If they can be swaggy, so can you, my friend. So can you. Oh, man. Uh, please swag me. And mm, I don't know how that sounds. But, uh, you know, I'm ready to be swagged. I'm ready to learn a little bit about my special guest, a.k.a. you, before we get into the advice and self-help portion of the podcast. Haran, first off, I just wanted to say I, you, you came on my radar when um, I had actually had Maz Jabrani on the podcast a little while back and we were promoting his shows in Phoenix, you opening for him. I just want to say you blew my mind. It really, yeah, no, absolutely. And I've seen quite after having this podcast, especially quite a few comedians and I'm, I'm constantly seeing different sets online and going to shows when I can and being safe, of course. And, um, and I feel like, you had a different type of vibe that was fascinating. And, and it, after seeing you perform, I think it encapsulated really well with something that I've heard you say on some podcasts and interviews where it's like, good comedians make people laugh, but great comedians make people think. Yeah. And I feel like after listening to your set, I was just like, wow, I feel like I got life lessons embedded in my, my brain and heart and I feel better. And not to mention the, uh, the uh, the story about your dad with the uh, with Magic Johnson that's amazing a, that's the thing exactly I that's what I try to do with my comedy is some comedians can be preachy some comedians mm-hmm. can be silly some comedians my my thing is I just want to reach as many people as possible I want to reach people and have them relate to me through the things that I discuss but also relate it to themselves and just be mm-hmm. more aware that's all just look at the world from a different perspective and see how many ways we can see not only the world, but each other. A lot of times we look at the world and it's through this pinhole of what's right in front. This pinhole, we all see this much, uh, which is about, you know, a quarter size of the world in its general size. The truth is 
there's a lot of different views, a lot of different ways to look at something. It's, it's the number six, number nine, which one is correct? It just depends on which side you're looking at. To some people, it just looks like a G. It just depends on where you're looking at it from. So everyone can be right. And more importantly, everyone can be wrong at the same time. Yeah, and a beautiful example, I uh, just flashing my white card yet again. I uh, So I'm Italian American. I lived in Italy for a little while. I speak Italian. My wife is Brazilian. That's amazing. And uh, I speak Portuguese as well. But I okay. until I was listening to um, uh, an interview with Moz, I said Iran and Iranian. And until I heard him say, I, I hate when people say that. It's like nails on a chalkboard. It's Iran. And then I started to learn a little bit more through him, through you, listening to Back to School with Maz Jabrani. Uh, I mean, it's really, it, it's like you said, I had this little myopic view of based off of my experiences, my family and, and friends and little circle. And then I'm able to learn more and you being able to take all those little holes and put them together so that everyone can kind of see a related view is a really magical thing, I think. Well, it's interesting you hit something you didn't have to know but now that you do know you use it appropriately that's the whole yes. thing the concept is if you know better you'll do better and that is the biggest part the most important part of the story that you said is i was saying it wrong and now i say it correctly that part is the most important part i was but i am what are you doing now and that's something i wish more people would focus on rather than trying to keep to that I was, and therefore that was correct. Therefore it still should be. Sometimes we just need to learn new things in the world. It's okay. It's okay, we'll all be fine. We le we're learning new pronouns. We'll be fine, nothing changes. Yes. Everything yes. will be fine, we'll all be fine. It, it's not that big <laughs> a deal. You want me to call you they, call you they. You know what my pronouns are? Tehran, my pronouns are Tehran. My pronoun is just Tehran. I like being called Tehran, Tehran, and Tehran. That is how I feel. So what? <laughs> so wonderful. what? Oh, man. And, and I was going to ask too, it's a wonderful name, Tehran. And another thing that I learned, I remember back when I was meeting my wife, I thought the capital of Brazil was Rio de Janeiro or Sao Paulo, and it is not. But sure. I also learned that Tehran is the capital of Iran. And um, I, I was listening to some interviews, just hearing about how I know you're very proud of your name, but I also know that there were some challenges with folks and um, just the meaning of it, people thinking false things about Iran or just thinking about certain negative things. And sure. that, that had a negative connotation or some, some negative moments for you. But So my name being the capital of Iran, it would be like if you and your wife named your child Brasilia, right? So yeah. it, it's nice. the concept of the capital of which, by the way, I don't know why people don't know that the capital of Brazil is just Brasilia. It's literally just <laughs> Brazil, Brasilia, right? <laughs> but it's just not that big a city. That's why. It's, it's yeah. the same yeah. thing happens in Canada. Do you know what the capital of Canada is? Oh, my God. No, I was going to say Toronto. It's okay. Oh. It's okay. Most people, most people don't. In fact, that's one of my pop quizzes out of a lot of shows. But the capital of Canada is Ottawa. But most people would assume it's Toronto, Montreal, maybe even Vancouver, something of mm -hmm. that nature. Quebec, people throw out provinces yeah. rather than actual cities. But the truth is, it's Ottawa. Sometimes, you know, Washington, D.C. is just known, even though New York City is more famous. It just it just all depends. Right. But my yeah. name, Tehran, is the capital of Iran. Tehran does happen to be the biggest city in Iran. It does happen to be one of the biggest city and it's the most populated. So it's actually a very known place in Iran but it's not specifically very well known in the rest of the world. The only time people see it is possibly on the news and they see Tehran and they're like, what is that associated Tehran, Iran concept? So growing up, especially being half black, half Persian with a name like Tehran, it wasn't always easy. People love picking on the name. People love changing the name. People loved calling me Tyrone. I was all types of things, yeah. Tehran. I was all types of different names. So I say Tehran because it's the easiest way to pronounce it for everybody yeah. enunciate, but it's actually Tehran. If you wanted to get extremely proper, it'd be Tehran. But Tehran works for me as long as people say it in that correct order, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. happy. But people ask what's in the name, everything. Your identity is in your name. Your name yeah. is the sweetest thing you've ever heard because it's the one thing you've heard the longest and the most. It's the word that you've heard the longest in your life and the most in your life is specifically your name. 
So everyone's name has, has significance for them. And if they choose their name, even better. But if it's the name they're given, then it is. And we should try. I try to learn people's names. I try to work with people's names so that I can address them with the respect before I disrespect them. You know, <laughs> that's how it yeah. goes. Before I break you down, I'm going to build you up. Oh, man. And build me up you did because I really got you were like, well, that was a really white voice you had, but you've got a great name. And I that oh, just the silver lining on that dark cloud. It is. So it's it was, such a great it's a, it's actually it's actually a tool that I use for people that a lot of F boys use on women. I nag <laughs> and build, nag and build, gaslight, gaslight, nag and build. That's what my comedy is, actually. Oh man. Yes. I, I, th you know, that's kind of true. And it, it, it kept it in this really nice vibe where I was captivated, a little scared, and then also laughing at the same time. And um, I was going to ask, I mean, I had heard, I think I'd seen on Wikipedia that you actually got into comedy um, in Washington, DC and Moz, you met him and he said, you should come to LA. Exactly. Is that how it so, happened? So Max and Meany was the first person to put me on stage. And then wow. directly followed by Moz a couple months later, Moz is the one who said, you can do this. You're really good. You need to move to LA. You need to be in LA and make this happen. And okay. those were my first two shows. And I made the move to, I transitioned to LA. When I first started comedy in LA, I actually still lived in Washington, DC. I had to make that flight every single Monday to make it to my show wow. every single Monday for nine months and two weeks. Every single Monday as I was <laughs> finishing law school, in my last semester, I had to make that, I had to make that trip to Los Angeles, California, make it to my show, and then make it right back on the red eye to make it back to my class Tuesday morning, every single week. <laughs> oh my God. And I know you also have a master's in economics with a law degree. What was your what was your p desired path before comedy? What did you want to end up doing? I wanted to be Puff Daddy. I know that sounds crazy given my educational background. However, the reason why I'm so educated is not because I wanted to put it on a resume somewhere. It's because I felt by basically a principle that was in my family that every person, specifically people of color and minorities in the United States, but everybody, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. includes you and includes your wife and includes everyone, should be as educated as possible. We have the most amount of access to education in this country than almost any other country, especially for such a large size population. All of us can achieve education. And so we should, we should go out of our way to make sure to do so. We should all do so. We all receive free education from K to 12 by the state. And then once we hit college, for some reason, K to 12, that's fine. But if you pay, if you don't pay for college, you're a communist. I don't know how that works, but that's the mindset of so many people. All of a sudden it becomes communism. But the fact is we can all go to some type of higher education within reason. There are a lot of people that don't have the opportunity. So those who, of us who do, we should take full use and advantage of it. That's amazing. That's, God, that's really cool. So after law school, I mean, you were already a little bit into, I would say, well into the comedy path. I was in. You, I was in. During law so school, after, I was in. At the end, I was in. Yeah. So after law school, did you make the move to LA? Right after law school, I, after I took the bar, I made the move to LA. Finish how, up, how, finish up one chapter. In that chapter, start the next one. How did your parents react to it? Were they supportive? My parents were loving. They were as supportive as they could be. Mm -hmm. They didn't know how to support, but they did not stop me. They did not stop me. And that was imperative. So sometimes it's not just the support. It's the, I won't stop you from achieving your goal, which means that I won't neg you. I won't nag you. I won't shame you. I won't guilt you. I won't do any of those things. I'll remove that part of it. You know that you can achieve it, then you need to you need to do so. If you believe it, you can achieve it. Go receive it. It's, it's your go to go. That's great. How do they feel now? They love it now. Now that success is, has inched my way, of course, they're all for it. And this happens, especially with these unroutine career occupation, destiny type lives. We were talking about someone earlier. In, 19, in 1986, this person decided, who was in Philadelphia, by the way, born and raised on the playground is where he spent most of his days. Most of his day. He was 
a, a person from a middle class to lower middle class family whose parents worked very hard to save money for his college. He takes this money and instead of going to a college, which he got into some very good schools and did very well on his SATs, he decided to make a rap album with his best friend, Jeff, and call say, he's the DJ, I'm the rapper, and not go to college. His parents were furious. They could not have been happy with this decision, especially in the 80s when rap was not a viable career choice. That sounded yeah, like the most yeah. horrible thing to do. This wasn't the 90s and 2000s. <laughs> this wasn't when people were making millions and millions of dollars in, in the, in the hip hop world. This was when people were basically selling drugs and just doing hip hop because it was fun. And he decided to take Dude. a chance and do it for real. And that person's name is Will Smith. He's the Fresh Prince. And the Fresh Prince is also the first person to ever receive a Grammy in hip hop. They actually basically created it for him specifically because it was that instrumental and that, that important monumental to music. So we look back on then and see in 1989, they didn't even play hip hop on television. It was taboo until the mid nineties. So many rappers actually used to boycott the Grammys. And now it's everywhere. Now you can't escape hip hop if you wanted to. Everyone, I have, I have people's grandmas that are putting out hip hop albums and dancing a lot. That's just how it goes. In the future, someone's gonna say to their grandchild, my favorite song is My Neck, My Back. That is someone's favorite song. <laughs> my Neck, My Back, my, yep. and My Crack is someone's favorite song. And that is something they will have to express to their grandchild. That is true. Uh, that's what I'm going to have to explain to my grandchild. Exactly. I exactly. But uh, uh, that's so fast. And uh, obviously, you know a lot about Willard. I was going to ask, was he one of those influences that kind of kept you when you were thinking about going to that path of it's not really reliable? Um, I think there was a little bit of a foundation solidified since you were going to LA, but I'm sure there was still a little bit of uncertainty. And how, how did you feel about that uncertainty in the career path of a comedian? You know, it's actually really interesting you asked that. Without knowing it, unbeknownst to him, Willard Smith is actually one of my inspirations because of who he yeah. is as a person, what he's been able to achieve, all the things he's done. Successful in music, successful on television screen, successful on film, and just an overall generally known good person a person who cares, a person who gives back, a person who does his best, includes others. It's all the things yeah. and attributes I want and aspire to be. Just an all around good person who helps out, helps the careers of those around them, makes sure that everyone's doing well, benefits everybody, and is just generally loved. Though I, would, I wouldn't mind being hated, but as long as I'm respected, the concept is I just really like what Will Smith is able to achieve. This is a person Who's, who made me realize that the best investment you can make is believing in yourself. The best investment you can make is believing in yourself. There's no one that will tell you that Will Smith is the best rapper alive. No one. And yet, this is a person who has four Grammys. You know, this is a person yeah. who's been nominated for an Academy Award. Yeah, yeah. You Damn. know? So, and, and not just once, twice, like that to me is amazing. This is not the person you would just automatically assume. And yet it is. Mm -hmm. So that's why I have a lot of respect for Will Smith. I have a lot of respect for Will Smith, the person who, by the way, regardless of any type of situationships that have happened, is in love with his wife, as far as we know, has two children who are, even if we don't think that they're always normal, they are special. They are you know, both musically acclaimed, known people who also trend setting. Why not Will Smith? Yeah. And if, if you put your, if you walk a mile in Will Smith's probably more expensive than my shoes, I, I, it would be very hard to be in that situation and try and raise kids in a way that people wouldn't criticize. And I feel like I remember growing up, I grew up on Fresh Prince. I loved that Fresh show Prince of Bel Air so much. And, Amazing show. And, and just grow. I grew up with Will. Basically, Willard was was a companion of mine. He was there in the dark days and Men in Black. Maybe Wild Wild West made it a little darker, but the, everything else. I mean, it was all really great. And 
like you said, I need to learn more about Willard because he was truly, without me even knowing it, thinking back as you're saying it, was an amazing, amazing person. But, He's an amazing uh, inspiration to everybody. It doesn't matter race, religion, color, ethnicity. Will Smith has been there, once again, a box office hits, whether it's right. Men in Black or Independence Day, Pursuit of Happiness, Muhammad Ali, whatever Ali the movie, whatever it is, yeah. we've seen Will and his transformation. But the concept yeah. of Will is yeah. bigger to me. This is a person who seems accessible, relatable. It makes me realize anyone can do it. He showed that his charm and charisma can overcome a lot of problems. I, I guarantee if Will Smith ran for president, he would win. He would win. We would vote for Will Smith. We trust Will Smith. Oh, hell yes. We yes. trust Will Smith. We trust Will Smith more than Kevin Hart, more than any other Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks, maybe neck and neck. <laughs> but I would trust Will Smith just a little more. You know, I would trust Will Smith just a little more. And Tom if, yeah, if, if Will Smith came to my house and was like, no questions asked, I need your furniture, I would be like, Will, please take it. I you just, have to, he has to take your furniture. Like if Will Smith needs your couch, he just gets your couch. Yeah. Tom no Hanks, I'd be like, asked. whoa, 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 Tom, what is this for? Can um, we at least talk about this? Do you want a volleyball um, instead? Will said, like you would, <laughs> you would, you would work it out with. But that's, that's the concept. I, sometimes we find not necessarily idols, but examples of who to aspire to be even someone mm -hmm. like even even someone even someone in in my in my wheelhouse is i i really appreciate kevin hart when it comes to comedy too when it comes to comedy i appreciate kevin hart his hard work his work ethic is what got him to where he needed to be it wasn't luck it wasn't fortune and to be honest it wasn't necessarily skill if i gave you a script of kevin hart's comedy albums and said read this on stage it may or may not be funny but kevin hart himself is just funny like him or not he's yeah. funny he's got a thing about him that makes you just like this guy a wonderful person too mm -hmm. right wonderful mm -hmm. person too of course has his own personal demons and flaws but a right. wonderful person someone like adam sandler you know what i really like about adam sandler the fact that he puts his own friends in almost all his movies he makes sure that the team that started out with him stays with him who would rob schneider be without adam sandler yeah. sure we may have heard of rob schneider but we wouldn't have loved rob schneider yeah that's very true that's very, and, and i'm pretty sure he's going to keep doing it even in the cemetery they're going to have the tombstones all right next to each other and maybe in the same tomb who knows the same grave you know but, and knowing uh, adam sandler he'll make a netflix movie about it and sell it to us <laughs> somehow It'll be called The Grave. And it's just somehow, <laughs> it's about five best friends who die next to each other and nothing happens. And we would still be there. We would still be about that. We would. We would. Yeah. Oh, God. I definitely would. Oh, man. Well, that's beautiful. And, and I think you touched on the point, too, where we talked about the glorious Will Smith, who is in everything one could want in, a, yes. in all the personality traits. There's also the Kevin Hart's and the Adam Sandler's where they might not have everything that you would agree with like etc but i think there are parts of people possibly every single person maybe there's somebody that's all bad i'm like so sorry can you hold Smith. on one second i'm sorry hold oh, on yeah, one yeah, yeah. second yeah no one ever knocks on my door and now someone was knocking <laughs> and they wouldn't stop hi i'm so sorry i thought for a second it might have been will smith it might have been will smith like, <laughs> it could have been he'd be like i need your couch i need your couch and i was ready to give it to him <laughs> i was literally well ready to give it to him oh man well well i'm glad it was fine and and uh, I, at first when you said i'm so sorry i was like oh my god i thought you were gonna be like i'm so sorry but that is just utter bullshit and i was like that might be fair. Yeah, that's fine. But but to my point here, you can you can say if it's bullshit or not. But I think that there is at least maybe there's an anti Will Smith somewhere out there. But I feel like there's a slice of everybody out there that you can connect with and say, oh, that is a great quality. And I feel like I can connect with that. And I think that there is an anti Will Smith. That. There's many they're called trolls. They troll on YouTube and Instagram and just hate, hate, hate. And those are anti Will Smith's because I could never see Will Smith. I've never heard him say, or at least publicly denounce somebody negatively. Yeah. Not a single yeah. time, not a single time. In fact, I've seen him even with people that he didn't specifically like, whether it's 
August Alsina or Tupac Shakur. I've seen him apologize. I've seen him be honest and vulnerable, but I've never seen him speak negatively on someone else. I've never seen it happen, except, of course, against hate. He speaks up against hate. But other than that, yeah. I've never seen yeah. him do so. However, we have a lot of trolls. We have a lot of negative entities in the world that love to pick on something and pick on people. They love it, mm. no matter what it is. And they're the people who hate on Will Smith. They think Independence Day is stupid or Wild Wild West, which was kind of stupid, is stupid or even more stupid than it was. Or And right, it really right. wasn't that bad a movie, let's be honest. No, no, no. no. And, and Men in Black or whatever it is, they just find the negative and hate and everything and they want to destroy instead of create. Then those are people who are the anti Will Smith. Those to me are the anti Will Smiths. Yes. I feel like we need a, a diminished syllable word for it, like the AWS. No, that's probably about the same. But yeah, I agree with trolls. I guess trolls is the correct word for it. But I think you're right. And I'm not sure how to get past the trolls. I have encountered them. They are ugly and in, in terms of character. I'm not sure how they are on the other side, but um, you know, it's, it's something I guess that we have to deal with, especially with the internet and people able to well, that's just- the, thing. the internet has em empowered people to hate, which is not the point of the internet. The internet was supposed to allow people to watch porn, but people <laughs> have taken the internet and that's really what the internet was for. Watch porn and pay for porn online. That was really what it was for. And then we took it and added all this information. We added all this information. And instead of actually reaching out and trying to get this information, people either find confirmation, which is confirmation bias and information that pertains specifically to how mm. they already think, or instead of actual facts, or they use it to, sometimes they use it to hate and yeah. emblazon their own personal dislike and dis Dane for things, which I don't think everyone has to like everything. That is not what I'm saying. In fact, I, I enjoy when people do not like something. When you critique something, it only makes things better. It's when you criticize something that it only gets worse. So to me, critiquing things is a great thing. This is why I like something and this is why I don't. But when you're just right. like, Drake sucks, that's not a critique. <laughs> that's not a critique. You're not yeah. helping. You're not helping yeah. any space. You're not, if you don't like it, change the channel. And that happens a lot. It happens a lot. Unfortunately, it happens a lot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, it's it's really interesting too. It just made me think, I feel like it also, it, it ripples into our daily lives in terms of our failure to be able to communicate about how we feel even. It's like, uh, and, and me included, maybe I, and I'm, I don't consider myself a troll, but sometimes I have difficulty talking about how I'm feeling, whether it's with my wife or with my family or whomever. And it's like, I feel good. I feel bad. I feel very good. I feel very bad, but being more articulate and identifying those things within yourself. And then also when it's outward talking to people and, or talking about things where I'm sure Will Smith's feelings get hurt too if people say that we saw sucks. him cry we saw him cry that's right yeah yes uh, yes entanglements or whatever he he's a man and he's just a man the a human close being. to immortal but i mean he's just a man and i think everybody's feelings get hurt and if you are able to offer critiques instead of or uh instead of criticism and just say that sucks i feel like that is helpful to somebody and and um, it can help the thing. a lot of times when people are like, that sucks, they don't even mean it. They just want the reaction. They just want to hurt because yeah. they want to hear you say, ouch, which is why I always give the, I always give the advice to comedians, entertainers, artists, anyone who's in the spotlight, respond to the positive comments. If you overwhelmingly respond to negative comments and battle back and forth, then yeah. I, as a fan, I will feel devalued and I will see that negative reinforcement. I will say, you know what I should do? I should also put down negative comments because at least then mm. my idol, the person who I enjoy, the person who I love, fangirl over, that person will respond to me too. That's not fair. That's not fair to, to someone who is a true fan. Give them yeah. and show them the same amount of energy, even more. Show them yeah. that twice as much energy because they're the ones that are propelling you to where you want to be.
Ex- yes, exactly. Give them your metaphorical couch and leave the trolls outside. Don't exactly. Do them. not feed the trolls, whether it's the trolls online or the trolls in your real life. Do not feed the trolls. Do not feed That's... the trolls. Nothing. You know, you know, of all the people, all the people that are like, they hear all these things about Will Smith. You know what Will Smith has heard about them? Nothing. All the people that hate Kim Kardashian, you know what Kim Kardashian has heard about all of them? Nothing. She doesn't even yeah. know they exist. Yeah. She you're, knows. You're right. There's a collective, but she doesn't know the individual. She doesn't know. We love judging people and not so much their actions. We love feeding the trolls. Mm-hmm. We do this very often. If you don't like Kim Kardashian, very simple. Don't pay attention to Kim Kardashian. Done. Problem solved. Yeah. We've moved yep. on. Yep. Exactly. We've moved on. And, and you know what? I think it might, the trolls, them saying this sucks or whatever, it stems back to them. What they really want to say is, I want some attention. I am feeling very lonely and I uh, am lashing out right now because exactly. things aren't great. Exactly. That's the Man. concept. Man. Well, I... Whew. I am just drowning in facts and great learnings here. We're going to get into the advice and answer some questions that some fans have sent in from Reddit. Um, Before I dive into those, I like to get us nice and jazzed or inspired with an inspirational quote. So I've got one here, locked and loaded. But before I pull the trigger, Tehran, I wanted to ask, do you have any inspirational quotes that you really cling to that uh, help you in your days where you're not feeling that motivated? Yeah, I, I, there's a quote, actually, it's one that comes from, it, Mar- people attribute it to Martin Luther King, mm-hmm. but they, they say that it was possibly one of those things that Jesus said, it's like a, but anyway, the quote says, shut the fuck up. That's clearly one of the most inspirational quotes you can have, whether it's you saying it to yourself or saying it to other people or saying it. <laughs> for those who deserve it. And sometimes you deserve it. You're just like, you know what? Just shut the fuck up. Let's, let's try to do that thing where we listen twice as much as, as we talk and try to pay attention. And even though I'm talking a lot on this, in general, I try my best to listen. This is a podcast, so the, the arena is to talk. But usually I, when I go in these rooms, for example, if we're on Clubhouse or I right. listen, if I see a comedian that comes in, a George Wallace, a Dane Cook, Tiffany Haddish, mm. Even though they're my friends, I listen. I literally listen because they have knowledge that I don't have. And I want to know that information. So mm-hmm. just everybody needs to just kind of shut the fuck up. All the people complaining a little too much, let's just shut the fuck up. All the people who are anti-principled movements, shut the fuck up. Let's just all, uh, <laughs> let's just make this happen. We're all in it together, regardless. <laughs> That might have to be the promo clip of the episode, but that was another beautiful example of the feelings that I I felt at your set, where you just you were in these serious modes where I was captivated, and I I thought you were just going to spit out an actual Martin Luther King Jesus. Maybe it is. Maybe it is a Jesus quote. Maybe Leviticus left something out, and he said, Sh- "Listen, parables. Shut the fuck up. Let's just listen." I mean, but 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 kind of. Let Let's examine the life of one said jesus right people would be right. like hey jesus what do you want to teach us and he'd be like love everybody and they'd be like really everybody and he's like yes it's very simple love everybody and then he, they'd be like what about the gays and then he'd be like everybody what about the blacks <laughs> yeah yeah a- everybody <laughs> at some point jesus was like you know what shut the fuck up <laughs> let's just let's uh obviously you're not catching on it's easier if i die and come back to life it's easier if i die <laughs> and come back to life than you just keep doing this. It's not going to work for me. At some point, it's just to shut the fuck up. It's just, that's literally a lesson we all need to learn. And, and I feel it with my, Agreed. if you don't like gay marriage, I understand. I don't agree, but I understand. Shut mm. the fuck up. You don't like gay marriage? Don't marry a gay guy. Problem solved. It's so solved. It's actually so solved. You don't have to marry a gay person. They don't want to marry you. Listen, I live in West Hollywood. I'm inundated with gay people. They don't want to marry me either. Trust me, I've tried. <laughs> Nobody, they don't need us, okay? They don't need us. It's yes. fine. That's what I mean. If we just all learn to kind of just take a step back, shut the fuck up, realize this amazing earth that we've been given, 
that we've done nothing to earn this amazing earth that we're just wasting away and burning away and, and creating our own drama when there is real problems on this planet, just shut the fuck up. You, you have this religion, that's your religion, that's great. Shut the fuck up. This, oh, is, your, this is your idea of, j- shut the fuck up. It's very simple. You it know? is. I, I'm going to use it as my next. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No, that's it. Just. I'm going to use that as my next mantra the next time I meditate. So that's beautiful. I, I really like that. <laughs> it uh, is. So, so thank you for that, Tehran. That's a beautiful quote. I have this one. It's actually not by any person whatsoever, but it's by a robot. The robot's name is Inspirobot. And its sole purpose is to be able to take some of the wisest words known to man or woman and just mash them together for a beautiful AI constructed inspirational quote. Taran, you're one of the smartest people I know now. So let's see if you can decipher any meaning or, or if you think this is complete garbage. <clears throat> Inspire about this week, it says, childhood is just like the eye of a hurricane. Overrated overrated <laughs> that's actually a great understanding that is that is a great understanding of childhood i'm not gonna lie it kind of is right because uh, it's childhood it's like this big hurricane of all these things that are happening it's not it doesn't seem linear to you because just this happens and and there are traumatic events but happy moments and just this potent emotions that are just going all over the place and uh you know it's really a little overrated once you look back on it it. is childhood is actually a lot overrated and yet it's that calm before the storm it's the calm before the storm just like that eye of the hurricane Uh, it's all the things that that, you know it's all the calm and it's surrounded by chaos surrounded by chaos and that's Mm. kind of how childhood childhood works it's the best of times it's the worst of times it's that dickens moment Oh, yes. that So true. So true. And then once adulthood comes, it's just you're swirling around in the hurricane. You've got meetings, you've got podcasts, you've got all the things we that aren't important are important. When you're a child, how many times you're like, oh, when I'm bigger? No, kid, stay a kid. Nap time. Amazing. Snacks. Delicious. Do you understand? All oh, the my granted. God. <laughs> all the time. It seems so as it passes by. And yet there's oh. a storm right around it. Brilliant. Yes. AI will definitely take over. So good to know. Oh, perfect. Inspirebot approved. All right. Now that we're nice and inspired, we can move on to some questions that some fans have submitted. So this one, this first one's from our fan, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. He found it on Reddit. It says, I accidentally ran up some international charges calling a girl from Tinder. How do I explain to my mom in a less embarrassing way? So I got quite drunk this weekend and phoned a girl in the US I'd met on Tinder by mistake instead of using FaceTime audio. So it's racked up the bill and it's very hefty. I should be able to afford to pay it back by the time the bill comes, but I'm really, I really don't want to explain it and how it occurred. That's frankly quite embarrassing. LMAO, any advice on how to put it more eloquently or excuses? Thank you. I love how Jamie's being so, so, vulnerable and true speaking in regards to this this has happened to many people jamie my advice to you is blame it on your dad be like dad's cheating mom (laughs) i don't know what's going on i don't know who this is oh my god it's a cute girl never seen her before but i've seen her with dad i've seen dad in the car with her a couple times dad was talking about maybe taking a trip a business trip to wherever she's she is just blame it on dad blame it on dad This is a perfect moment where you're almost pulled into that hurricane, but instead you can push your dad right into it. And then you get to stay in that calmness. If mom and dad are good, they'll survive this. And if they're not, if this is all it took, then they weren't meant to be in the first place. That's just how it goes. That's how it goes. You don't want to explain this to your mom. You're not, you're never going to let this (laughs) down. Moms don't just don't live and let live. No moms bring stuff up and use it against you later. So what you need to do is blame your dad. Let your dad go down for this. I'm sure there's something he should have gone down for that he didn't. Here we go. You know what it's called? Karma. You're welcome. Oh, how beautiful. That is amazing. Yeah, there's no need to explain a 200 pound or $200 phone bill. To Never. Because she's, she's going to bring it up at all the Christmases, all the family reunions. So she's going to definitely tell the family. Yeah, yeah. definitely not fun. Not yeah, fun. So instead, just have them divorce. So then you can have two Christmases, double the presents, and um, 
you know what, if it happens, then they'll be like, you know what, it's okay. I understand you miss your mom. I'll, I'll pay for the phone bill. This and time. if they divorce over this, then they weren't meant to be in the front. It's a win-win. It is a win-win, Jamie. You have helped your family. You have helped yourself. I, I couldn't agree more. And I think, you know what, if this holds them together, you should just keep testing the marriage because if this puts any rift in it, it I don't think they belong together. It's just not That's a real thing. Be. That's it's not me. That's science. That's actually science. <laughs> so you're just experimenting. This is just getting hypotheses and testing it out using the scientific method. I feel like you're doing a good job educating Thank yourself. You. So beautiful. Educating us. We're in this together. We're in this together, Stefan. Appreciate it. Okay, beautiful. All right. Before we get to the last question, I've got a quick little segment called Positive Spin where I feel like a lot of the times when a bad thing happens to us, we think of the negative. And so I want to be able to train my mind to start thinking of positive things so I can start overcoming these challenges when they arise. So, Tehran, what I've done is I have a little scenario and we're going to think of the positives to this scenario. Does that make sense? Positives. Awesome. Perfect. So in this scenario, I know you love bathroom bay. Uh, what was it? Bathrobe heartthrob? The bathrobe heartthrob. Yeah. Bathrobe heartthrob. So as we all know, society kind of dictates what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. I've heard you say multiple times, and this rings so true. What's really the difference between a bikini and lingerie? Just whatever society dictates and, and exactly. says. Exactly. So society took a turn for the worst on this day. They said, you know what? Bathrobes are inappropriate. They're horrible. You shouldn't use them ever. People stop selling them. I don't know what bathrobe brands there are, but True. they're gone. Um, they cancel all of the episodes of Family Matters where Uncle gone. Carl is wearing a, a bathrobe. Just done. Tehran, what are, what are the positives here? Well, this is what you have to learn. Bathrobes, gone. You have to accept that fact. Snuggies, snuggies <laughs> are in. A snuggie is just a bathrobe that you're wearing on the front. Still got the comfort. You got to crisscross it up. You're just going to wear a snuggie. That's literally what a snuggie is. I'm so hurt by the fact that I didn't come up with snuggie. Like, how did I not think of that? I get on airplanes with my bathrobe, turn them around, and, and I never thought people would buy them because I did not believe enough in myself. And now oh. I've learned my lesson. Bathrobes are gone. Bathrobes are gone. Snuggies are in. Oh my God. Beautiful. I, yeah. You didn't have that Will Smith shoulder angel saying, believe in the Snuggie. Believe I didn't. In the snuggie. I didn't. I had the wild, wild West voice. I had the wild, wild West voice. Oh man. The, oh, you know, sometimes I get the men in black voice. So he says something really profound, but then he, he flashes me. So then I forget. And it. you forget that happens all the time. I can understand that. Yeah. I just so, get Robert Klein, not even <laughs> Selma. I, I get Robert Klein of all people just telling me what to do. It was like, why would I listen to that guy? You just want to flick him right off the shoulder because that yeah, like, you'd rather sure. have nothing. Sure. Oh God. Sure. All right. Well, that's a beautiful, I think you passed the test. You're a positive thinker. The well, other thing I was thinking about is um, I think black market bathrobes you could sell for pretty high. Um, so the ones that you have, you could probably make a fortune. Yeah. Hefty beautiful. premium. Yeah, of course. The bath. Psst, hey. What a bathrobe. Wait, isn't that a bathrobe? Yes, it's a bathrobe in my bathrobe. That's a real thing. <laughs> it's a real thing. That could be a whole concept. Oh my God. Beautiful. All right. Well, pass with flying colors. We're going to move on to the last question. And this one sent by fan Jeremy says, do I give my friends my sperm? I'll elaborate. I'm 24 and my best friends, uh, I'm a 24 year old male. And my best friends, 22 year old female and 25 year old female are a lesbian couple that have asked me to be their sperm donor hmm. i'm open to the idea but i don't know if it's a good idea what this cause would this cause confusion later on what would i need to legally do to ensure that i'm not liable for anything help that's actually a great question first of all if there's a situation where you can ever help your friends who are in the situation please do so there's a lot of lgbtq community yes. couples partners throuples even that are looking and more that are looking for children, but unfortunately, because of the constraints of their specified sexual preference, they're right. unable to basically consummate into a child. And it's not their fault. That's one of the things you have to right. understand. So if you can help them, help them. <clears throat> the thing that I suggest to you, Jeremy, 
is that you're a grown person and you realize these people are going to be loving, amazing parents. Hopefully they make more money than you because then you're even entitled to alimony, bro. You're entitled to child support at that point. You're making twice that lesbian pay all day. Now, true, do women get 70 cents to the male dollar? Yes, but that 70 cents to your dollar, Jeremy, I don't feel like you're making that dollar. I feel that lesbian <laughs> dollar is gonna go far. And here's the thing you have to think about. Who are these lesbian couples that you're about to impregnate? <laughs> are they people who work at CVS part-time or are they doctor, lawyer, Justin Bieber lookalikes? Whatever it is, you should definitely <laughs> take that into account. Take it into account and help your friends. It is a win-win. You get paid, they get slayed. I love it. Oh my God. That's, if there's not a sperm donor company that doesn't have that slogan, there That's, should be. Yep. You get paid, they get sprayed. Let's do this. Let's make they this happen. You spray, they pay. Uh, you know, I also, I think that there is nothing but like there, there is no better child raised than a child that people have been wanting so badly. They're trying to plan it. And a lot of children happen by their happy accidents. And I'm not saying that's a, necessarily a bad thing, but I feel like maybe parents that are better equipped are ones that they're in a loving relationship with each other. And, and actually want you. Yeah. Yeah, exa exactly. They exactly. They actually want you. Sheesh. That's like 2% oh. of all parents. It's like 2% in the world. 2% of parents actually want their kids. 2%. Ex exactly. And you know, that's going to be, the, that sperm's going to be spent anyway. So do you want it to be an amazingly raised child or do you want it to be a crunchy sock? I don't know. Exactly. You know who lives well? Rescued puppy lives well because that's the puppy that was rescued. Oh, oh. And sometimes they rescue the owners. That's how it seems. Oh, that works. That's life. Beautiful. All right. Well, what a beautiful note to end this harmonious advice. To Ron, first off, I just wanted to give you a huge thank you for coming on the show and talking with me. I appreciate you for having me. Thank you for thinking of me. Shout out to Maz Jabrani. Shout out to Max Amini and all the comedian friends that have all helped spawn who I am. Tiffany Haddish, Chris Red, Menachem Silverstein. So I, I always love showing love when I get a chance. Oh, that's amazing. And I want to show some love to you. Shout out to you. Shout out to Willard Smith as well. For Willard. being just a stand-up guy. Just so, being Willard. Just being Willard. Just a plain old Willard. And I also wanted to ask Saron, where can people find you, follow you? What have you got going on that you'd like to plug? Please find me all across the board on social media and on Clubhouse at I am Tehran. My name is Tehran, like the capital of Iran, at I am Tehran. If you don't know how to spell Tehran, just watch Fox News. Eventually, they're going to say my name. <laughs> it's the capital of Iran. Eventually, they're going to say, and today in Tehran, and then you're going to be like, oh, that's that guy on Instagram I should follow. And that's how it works. Make sure to follow me. Oh, beautiful. All right. And links will be in the show notes. So you don't even know, how, you don't even have to know how to spell it. You just have to know how to get in the show notes, which I'll provide a step-by-step -step guide after this episode. But in the meantime, thank you, Tehran. Thank you, everybody. And we'll talk at you next week. I appreciate you. And I can't wait to see where you end up on your comedy journey. Oh, thank you so much, man. That means a lot.